Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we are gathered in your house this sunny morning to listen to your word, to worship you, uh, to be with godly people, uh, to have hope, my Father, and for some of us to seek you for things that we desperately need. Bless our time together, for it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And everybody say amen and amen. Well, uh, uh, my name is Pastor Brian, for those of you who might not know me, uh, and I just want to welcome you again. Before we sit down, I want us to just have a... Uh, you know, like go to a deeper level. I know sometimes when we come to church, we are so uptight and we just want to listen to the word and then leave. But I don't know if there are things we can share at this stage now that we've been seeing each other for some time in church. If you're here and you're married, uh, I have a question for you. And if you're here and you're single uh, but dating, I have a question for you too. Uh, if you're not dating and if you're not married, it's okay. You can join in the conversation. So to you who are here and you're married, uh, when did you first see the one who is now your husband or wife? And what did you first see? All right? Uliona nini? All right? And for those of you who are, who are dating and are probably hopefully walking into marriage, what did you first see when you first saw this person? All right? So just kind of share that. I know you guys are all must, but I know there's a way we can still converse. Yeah, because today I want us to talk about attraction. All right? I know it doesn't sound spiritual, right? But then the impact of this thing, this force. In fact, let me just say probably there's somebody who's very angry today because your crush has not come to church today. All right? So probably Leo Haibambi. All right? Everything is just dim. All right? So let's have this conversation. All right? Yes, yes. Let's talk. Let's talk because I want to know. I'll hopefully tell you mine. Yeah, I can see these guys behind here. Having a good conversation. <laughs> no talk. <laughs> because, uh... All right. Yes, I can see guys having a good conversation. All right. Okay. I didn't want you to tell them from 1940. All right. So, so I still need to preach a sermon. So why don't we give the Lord a big round of applause be, before we even hear this. You can have your seats. You can have your seats. You know, um, I have an amazing wife, um, Jean Rose. Very beautiful. Uh, and to be honest, the first day I laid eyes on her, I had gone on ministerial escapades. Uh, I had just finished high school in Upper Hill School, and I had taken a friend of mine to minister in Gara girls, all right? And so as I was there being asked questions about relationships, I'm supposed to be very spiritual and in a spiritual mood where you don't see beautiful girls. But I saw a very yellow skinny angel walking past and I was distracted and I asked myself, my goodness, what is this? <laughs> but anyway, what I did know after a long time, one day I'll, I'll tell you a story for those of you who do not know, is that she had also noticed me. So, uh, I, I, but the first thing I saw was an amazing skinny angel. So if you wonder how this relationship started, it started with one simple, very powerful force called attraction. Somebody say attraction. You know, I can remember one of my good friends, uh, Pastor Benjamin probably knows him, um, in the age when we were looking uh, to find soulmates and wives and, and we were born again young men and we were you know, seeking to be guided by spiritual principles. I remember he had just found a lady and they had uh, encountered some issues. So we were somewhere in a hotel talking about what the problem was. So I asked him, tell me about this chick. And he just, you know, there's a face where people start, you know, having, and you can tell something not so good is about to come out of their, of their mouth. So the girl was like, hmm, she's a jewel on the outside, but a jigger on the inside, all right? And I was, I mean, so, so this, this here is partly what I want to talk about, all right? Because um, it actually goes with something that a famous Nairobi businessman said a couple of weeks ago, and he said, marriage can be slavery, right? But it can only be so if you, and, and this is now me adding, if you get married to a master, all right? Because ideally you're supposed to find 
a, a partner, like we have read, a helpmate, somebody who's a good fit for you. So today I want to talk about attraction. And attraction here is simply something or someone that generates interest, all right? So you see with your eyes and you have this feeling, this sense of attraction, something that draws you to them, something that for some of us makes us lose balance, lose our train of thought. We can't, you know, put English words together. Uh, for some ladies, you can't walk straight because you've seen somebody who has swept you off your feet. I remember again in Upper Hill School. You, you can imagine this is a boys' school, a boarding school. I don't know how many of you have seen the parade uh, because you just driving and there's a parade space, a big space. So all the boys were there because there was a delay in the dining hall. And so we were there with our spoons, you know, just getting ready for dinner. And hey, along that road comes a lady, all right? The only lady in that vicinity. And she was just walking straight, minding her business. But then, you know, men, you know, boys, especially those in boarding school, they just started howling and shouting wah, wah! and the lady who was walking straight like this started walking like this <laughs> you know because she was blushing she was caught in the moment and sometimes that is what happens so you might wonder why am i talking about attraction today because i feel this is the start of possibly something amazing for some people but also the beginning of something extremely terrible for some of us. So there is a sense in which we need to manage it according to God's word. Yes, it's a force that is necessary for us to have for those of us who are called into this thing called marriage. I discovered an, at an early stage that I was not called to singlehood, all right? Because my eyes would just light up. You know, that's how you know you're not called into singlehood, okay? But if you want to know you're called into singlehood, you feel nothing, all right? Wanaume wanapita ni kama tu miti, all right? It's just the way you see trees, all right? Okay, so why? Why am I talking about this in the context of marriage? It's because there is a tendency to which, and I feel especially now in our generation, where people tend to get overtaken by attraction. This force, this sense of romance and emotion tends to sweep us off of our feet and we lose our mind and we make decisions based on things that are subject to change. You see, most relationships obviously do begin with attraction. That generates interest. And this is why we need to manage them, and I said it before, in a godly way. And again, the problem is many of us over-rely. We over-rely, but then, you see, we need to understand attraction as we see rocket science, where a rocket is propelled by combustion of gases, and for us, this is the sense of attraction and being overwhelmed by someone, being overtaken by how they speak, by how they walk. You know when you're attracted to someone, everything they do is right. You know, even if they have a kaskuma on their mouths in between their teeth, it's just perfect. It's not skuma, it's a piece of art, all right? Because they are so beautiful to you. That's why people say love is blind. But we need to see it as propulsion that takes you from the earth beyond the surface or the atmosphere and into outer space. And then once that combustion ends, then love takes over. Because love is what is real, all right? Marriage is real. In fact, people say, if love is blind, then marriage is an eye-opener, okay? Yes. You see, people are becoming increasingly attractive. I mean, if you look at the world we're living in now, everything is just fitting in place. You look at women these days and the way they do makeup, all women are mwah, all right? Any good makeup artist can make you look amazing. And you all look fantastic. Men have not been left behind. These days we are very conscious about our weight, conscious about our physique, how we look, how we smell, how we talk, how we posture ourselves. We are living in a world full of male and female wonders. And it's so easy to get carried away, all right? You see, this attractive force, and this is some of the reasons why I'm talking about, if not managed, can read into incompatible relationships where you're totally swept off your feet and what you know doesn't make sense, you just 
dive in and you get lost in that relationship. And it can lead to heartbreaks, broken marriages, because even those who gotten married and are supposed to ideally have come out of the attraction game are still so alive. I mean, their eyes are so alert, you know, nothing passes without their noticing. And, uh, you know, they're still uh, interested in attraction sites and they've become tourists. Yeah, you understand? And they're just touring and they're just moving around. So this is a problem that I'm talking about. Boys and girls are pursuing attraction instead of relations. And married men and women are still touring, pursuing, you know, Intercourse instead of <laughs> interrelation, all right? So what is the purpose of attraction and relationships that lead to marriage? You see, I believe the progression should be attraction should lead to conversation. It should initiate. It should cause you to want to talk to that person today after the service. Probably you notice that they live through that door, so you're going to circumvent and make sure that by the time you are leaving the gate, you leave at the same time so that you can, you know, show the way as a gentleman. But we all know you don't do that when you're entering a matatu. But because you're attracted, you know, attraction comes with a sense of dignity, na heshima, na etiquette, sindio? Because you want to put your best foot forward. So attraction to conversation, then conversation to communication, where you start knowing one another. Asking the question, are we a good fit for one another? Then after that, you get to a point where you say we are a good fit for one another. And as we'll see in the book of Genesis, a covenant is formed and God helps us stick together. So let's look at what we were talking about, Adam and Eve. And interestingly so, in Genesis 1 and verse 31, God saw all that he had made, including male and female, and he said it was good. I know the Bible does not go into detail to talk about how amazing Adam and Eve were. But if this was a blanket statement to say that everything God made was amazing and beautiful, then we can say they were, they were an item to look at. All right? This was a model couple, GQ cover magazine type of man and woman, Adam and Eve. But you see, I love the way the Bible introduces a story of these two people. These two people who found each other, one who was formed up, they were perfect fix for one another, but it doesn't make a big deal of attraction. But instead, it makes a big deal of purpose, of why they come together, all right? So attraction is good, but what is the purpose of attraction? Yes, you're attracted to this person, but what is the purpose? And the Bible here in Genesis also hints to the quality of their relationship, the quality of their marriage. And it hints by the ending verses of, I believe, Genesis 2, where it says, and these two were naked, but they were unashamed. Think about that for a minute. I know they had probably no sense of comparison or conscience, but they were naked. They had accepted one another. There was freedom in that relationship. There was acceptance. They were not ashamed to say anything or to be who they were. So the purpose was to facilitate marriage. God made Adam a helper. In fact, God didn't just bring a woman to awe him and cause him to lose his mind and overreact and call buffalo antelope and antelope buffalo. No, he brought an, a, a wife, a helper, somebody who would accompany him in life and give him support. So in Genesis 2.18, we see the Lord God said it is not good for the man to be alone. All right. I know Paul later on continued to say in the Pauline epistles that, you know, I want to say, and he said, this is just me. Marriage is not for anyone. If you, if for all of us, if you want to serve God, consider not getting into marriage. But if you're burning with youthful lust, then each one of us has to get a wife or a husband for themselves. So let me go back to Genesis. The Lord God said it is not good for this man to be alone. So here we can see God initiating, taking initiative to find this man a wife. Yes, and we can see that after he found him, that is the purpose. He then introduces the quality of their oneness and no shame status. And we find this in Genesis 20 and um, from, no, Genesis 2 from verse 20 to 25. Let's read that. It says, so the man gave names to all the livestock the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable man to fall in... Ah, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. 
Verse 21, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And when he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and had taken, that he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. One, the quality. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So we can see how they progressed in their relationship. Yes, it was first, this was an arranged marriage, purely arranged by a theocracy by the name of God. Having chosen, picked a wife and brought to Adam and told him, but now for us, since we are so many, we have to scout, we have to look. So how do we manage this thing called attraction? But I want to just reiterate a few points here for us to realize. Number one is that marriage was initiated by God. This is not your idea. You did not sit somewhere and say, hmm, I need a wife or I I need a God. No, this is something that comes from God. It is nature, natural for those of us who have been graced to engage in it. So what does this tell you? It needs, it tells you that we need to rely on God's guidance because it came from him. If he is the creator, he has the manual, all right? He understands the intricacies, the intricate details of this complicated thing called marriage, yet beautiful and amazing in nature. So he created a woman to be what? A suitable helper. You see, yes, when you meet a person, all you see is attraction, beauty. You, you are carried away. You just start hearing songs and you can't breathe. Oh, you're losing your breath because of this person's amazing looks. But then what is the purpose? You need to go beyond that because there should be a purpose. A woman or a wife in this sense is a helper. And there are many words that define who this person was according to different versions. The other versions define it as somebody who's fitting, just right, comparable, an aid, a partner, companion, somebody who complements you, a helpmate or a counterpart. Now the question is, can you see all that just by the first sight of someone. And I didn't want to lie to you. You know, some people are so spiritual, they tell you, oh, when I saw this woman, I saw a wife. That is a lie. When, when I saw Jinru, did I even know how she talks? Did I know her values? Did I know her character? The first thing I purely saw was a yellow skinny angel that I found very attractive. And I told God, hmm, hey, thank you, Jesus. Me gotta get some, all right? Hallelujah. Just, Lord God, thank you. Hmm? <laughs> anyway, but then another amazing thing here that God does is he puts Adam to sleep. I don't want to belabor this point, but why did God put Adam to sleep? Purely, I, in my understanding, is so that he could work uninterrupted. You see, some of us are in the business of looking. Some single people here are looking, scouting. But then we tend to overtake God and we tend to tell God, Songa Kando, hey, me gasta do this, all right? Because you think God atakutaftia, you know, mkorino for a wife. No, God knows you. You know, some of you don't trust God. You think God will bring you a woman who's veiled from head to toe, coming to you with scriptures and a cross. Alright? So, you know, some of you, when you're praying, you can't trust that God knows what you like in women. Alright? You know, some of us like them fat. Some of us like them thin. Some of us like legs. Some of us ni vichu or ingine I don't want to say. Alright? But I want to tell you this, God knows what you know, he knows what you want. Hallelujah. So trust him. That's why he said, Adam, enda ulale, lala, give God room and he will lead you to the right person. 
All right? Somebody say amen. amen. Or you don't think that that is a spiritual point. You know, some of you have compartmentalized. God, spiritual matters, check. But maze kwa mashore hapo ni achie. Hapo maze, I think I know better than you. No, you don't. You have no idea. All right? But God managed the attraction between Adam and Eve in the context of marriage. All right? You see, misguided attraction will always re- lead you to the wrong place. It needs to be on the railway track of marriage. Give it purpose so that you can evaluate it for more than just looks and outward aesthetics. You see, a wife was likened after Adam, a suitable helper who was fitting just right, comparable, as I say. But then somebody joked and said, when Adam saw Eve, and by that time, by the way, she was not called Eve. She was called Eve after they were chucked from the garden. But he said, this is woman. And many joke and say, Adam at that point was probably overtaken and he said, whoa, man. You know, in your, have, how many of you men here have ever gotten any unafikiria u dem utampatia ma vibes? Eh? And then unendapo unanza ma broken English za me, I, me, 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 my, my, eh, oi, Jesus. Chatuonane kesho. How many of you girls have ever looked at a man you thought was so educated and smart and intellectual and then he starts talking and you wonder, guy, what has happened? I'll tell you what happened. It was, it's your fault, all right? He's overtaken, all right? Akienda uko nyuma mazena kuangana dai. But anyway, they were both good, attractive people. But what I like about this relationship is they were naked and not ashamed. If you want to know a godly relationship worth your time and your future is one where you don't need to be ashamed of who you really are. Mazi hapa kuna wasia wajuangi kizungu. Me by the way, I'm not a kizungu guy. Ase wama you guy, you guy, my guy. Me na penanga kiswaili and I don't hide. And when I met this beautiful woman, I felt like I was myself. Unujo kuna mademo ingine new date. You go for a date, you have so much pressure. You unasue tata before uanze date. You try so hard. Is it worth it? Eh? Be yourself. They were naked and not ashamed. All right? So, my other question is this. Is there anything wrong with being attractive or attraction? No. There's nothing wrong. In fact, the Bible takes detail to describe certain personalities as being attractive. What did the Bible say about Sarah? What did he say about Tamar, about Saul, Joseph, Esther, David, Bathsheba? All these people were amazing to biblical proportions, all right? The Bible takes note to say, and this person was very handsome. He had amazing hair, amazing looks. So it can be a gift that should not be used for evil, but to glorify good or God. So if you're here and people always tell you that you're amazing, But let me say, all of us here should at this point say, I am wonderfully and fearfully made, all right? Let me tell you, even the ugliest women have children. Do you wonder how they got there? And by ugly, I'm saying what people say, but me, I believe all people have, you have someone in this world who will, you know, some of you look at me and you wonder, whom say kichwayake maze, who distract. I can't even concentrate. But let me tell you, I have somebody here who finds my head very amazing, yeah? So we all have somebody for us, all right? So there's nothing wrong, okay, with attraction. Attraction will earn you attention, but fearing God will earn you praise, all right? So this is why I want us to go beyond attraction. What does the Bible say in Proverbs 30 and verse 31? It says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And I think because squeezy et asisi machali to know mama kiasi, you know, we have gotten sucked into this thing. Even for us, this handsomeness and looking good, yes, but it is fleeting, my friend. Wait until you get to 40, all right? And your metabolism goes low, all right? And you now start having protrusions, all right? Or imbalanced body, you know, uh, issues. Let us focus on honoring the Lord, all right? Because that is given much more prominence than looks. You see, if we go to 1 Peter 3 and verse 5, we are told, attract people, yes, with your outer beauty, but even more with your inner 
beauty. All right? First Peter 3 and from verse 3 to 5, your beauty should not come from your outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold and jewelry and fine clothes. Rather, it should be out of your inner self, the unfading beauty of your gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Do you understand? God is the one who made you the way you are. And you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Pay attention to yourself. Yes, honor God with your body. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But don't overdo it, all right? I don't want to see our young girls here in church going to have insertions, extra things so that you can have extra protrusions so that you can murder the boys in our church. You know, especially because some boys here will not be able to worship. All right? Because yani they can't lift their eyes to the Lord. Because kuna mutu hapa anawatesa. All right? So let's focus more on honoring the Lord. So today I want to talk about types of attraction. Just quickly. What types of attraction exist? Number one, and this is the most dangerous, is pure sexual attraction. And what attraction is this? It is that attraction that just makes you feel some type of way. Yeah? You know what I mean, eh? I don't need to belabor this point. But it has no other motivation other than sex. All right? That's why sexy is a big word. When somebody says you're sexy, they don't mean you're pretty, you're, I want to spend my whole life with you, I want to get to know your mother, your crazy cousin, I want to come for all the harambees in your house. I want to buy land and grow old with you. No, they're just saying, can I have just one night with you? All right? But you see, they don't say, people don't say, I'm sexually attracted to you. No, they come in the same way as everybody else. So the danger is when you cannot know what type of attraction this is, you can have big problems. The other one is romantic attraction, where you just find a good man, a good woman, who yes, finds you attractive, but also wants to be with you. They want your company. They want to know who you are. They want to walk with you, live with you, dwell with you. The other one is just physical attraction. And this is normal. It could be even familiar. This is what, you know, you just like hanging around these kinds of people. You like being with them because you're alike. And then there's intellectual or emotional attraction where your minds just connect. There are people you sit and talk to and you feel like you've talked to your soulmate. All right? Yani, tuliongea na umsena ni kafila na ni feel. You know that kind of feeling? Because there are, just, there are some guys, yes, they are pretty, but when you start having conversations, you're like, guy, we are metoko happy sasa. You are pretty before you opened your mouth. You know that kind of thing. All right? But then there's what we call aesthetic attraction and this is what happens a lot of the times on social media and in Nairobi when you're walking around where everybody looks amazing it's just that one for hey check you check you check what and then it ends there so it comes with a bang and it leaves just the same way it came so why am I saying this is because I want you to be cautious to ensure that your attractions are similar especially in the context of marriage why am I saying these people it's because a man can come to a lady purely for sexual attraction, but yet the lady has come to the same man purely for romantic attraction. What happens after a short while? After he has gotten what he or she wants? It's a breakup. Heartbreak. All right? For some of us, we may hang in there longer and fight and fight until we get married, but finally we come to discover we have nothing that makes us compatible. We are not a good fit. You can imagine the disaster when romantic attraction meets sexual attraction or when intellectual attraction meets romantic attraction. Any, you hang out with somebody. You like visiting them. In fact, there are some people here who are friends with people of the opposite sex. They come to your house. You cook. You talk about everything from galaxies to budgets to foreign exchange. But what you don't know is, yes, you're connecting emotionally, but the guy feels nothing for you. So they take you for a long ride, only one day for you to ask them the question, and uh, where are we going? And they ask you the question, were we to go anywhere? And there you find big problems. So what am I saying? Take it slow. All right? For singles in here, say it with me. Take it. I want you to say it like you mean it. Take it. This is the same thing in the book of Songs of Solomon. 2-7. 
where this lady is so taken by the maiden, by that man, and they are falling in love. They are saying nice things to each other that are not relevant. They were saying, daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and the doors and the doors of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Self-control. Amen. This is why Song of Solomon 2.15 says, Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, are vineyards that are in bloom. You know, this language of vineyards is used to symbolize the, the, the sensitive state of marriage that we find ourselves in. And marriage needs to be tended, all right? It needs to be taken care of because if you allow attraction like little wolves to come, they will kill your vineyard at a young age and they will never see fruits that were meant to grow. So in conclusion, I want to say, be careful of misplaced attraction. You see, Proverbs for us who are married and verse 6, from verse 24 to 26, it says, keeping you from your neighbor's wife, from the smooth talk of the wayward woman, do not last in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. For a, pros for a prostitute can be hard for a loaf of bread, but another man's wife preys on your very life. So in conclusion, I want to say, guys, if love is blind, then that's why we as Christians need to walk by faith. Amen. For 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, your eyes are working. That's good. But what is your faith telling you about what you see? What guidelines has God given you? Yes, I want to also conclude by saying attraction is a powerful force that may lead you in the wrong path. If you want to know, ask David. All David did was to peep out of the window and he saw something that he could not let rest. But it led to murder. If you want to know it's dangerous, ask Samson. Their attraction was not similar and it cost him his eyes and his destiny. I want to encourage you, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 and verse 5, it says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. And I close with this. Attraction will bring you together, but agreement will help you walk together but only godly love will help you stay together amos 3 3 can two walk together unless they agree no but first corinthians 13 and verse 8 reminds us love never fails all right i know this is a an age of attraction there's chemistry even here in the midst of all the holiness <laughs> and it's all right god intended it that way we are emotional beings but manage it God's way. Close your eyes for a minute. I want to make us a prayer and I want you to pray for yourself. Those of you who are seeing someone, those of you who are married, this temptation for all of us. The force of attraction is still ripe for married people and single alike. Married people, let's ask God for self-control. But for you, yes, you singles, ask God for self-control and also guidance. Yes, as we sing a song as I close, I want you to pray for yourself. I would hate to see you heartbroken. I would hate to see you in a failed marriage. I would hate to see you left with children because of a broken marriage. It starts now. Yes. Let's stand up to our feet as we close. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this message that you have shared with us, Lord. I want to dedicate, Lord, a prayer for all the single people that are searching, those that are found. Give them godly principles. This is why we talk about life this year, because we want to talk about how faith applies in our real life. Lord, I pray for married people that they may have self-control. Lord, keep us together. Keep our marriages together. And Lord, I also pray for singles and those who are separated or divorced. Continue to give us peace and guidance in the process because we too have a place in your love. So Father, I bless you and I honor you for you are good. For it is in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And everybody say amen and amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching our service. We are so grateful that you decided to join us today. If you were blessed by our sermon, we want to ask that you would consider sharing this message with your friends, your family, your co-workers, anybody that the Lord leads you to share it with. We also would like you to consider supporting our ministry by any donations that the Lord places on your heart to give. Our details are on the screen. Lastly, give us a follow on our social media platforms and join us on for our services every Sunday from 10.30 a.m., 11.45, and 1 p.m. respectively. We hope to see you here with us. God bless you. See you soon.